Karl von Clausewitz was a Prussian general and military theorist, who's been labelled as one of the most important classical strategic thinkers. Early on, Clausewitz gained first-hand experience of war when he joined the Prussian military and fought against revolutionary France. In 1801, he was admitted to the Institute for Young Officers in Berlin and began his formal military education, an opportunity that would set the course for his future academic career. His time on the battlefield was still far from over, though, where he would fight for Prussia in the Napoleonic Wars. During this period, he became an instructor at the New Officers Academy and a military tutor to the Crown Prince. Later, he would lead one of four Prussian military corps in the final battles that saw the demise of Napoleon. With Napoleon defeated, a relative peace ensued, which allowed Clausewitz to buckle down on military theory. He became head of the military academy in Berlin, where he began writing his classic text, On War. The following rules are derived from this book and have been written by us to accurately summarize his lessons on strategy. If you'd like to learn more laws of power, then click the link in the description to get a free audiobook of The Prince by Niccolo Machiavelli. Without further ado, here are Karl von Clausewitz's rules on warfare and power. Cripple your enemy's ability to fight and watch them bend to your will. To predict the movements of your adversaries, look to their previous actions, not to some fantasy of how you would like them to behave. Do not delay in warfare until the objective is achieved, unless there is a clear advantage to waiting. To secure a swift victory, ensure that the losses your enemy will suffer by continuing to fight you will far outweigh those of adhering to your terms. Ultimately, war is a game of assessing probabilities and then getting a lucky roll of the dice. One can only make decisions based on their best judgment. The war itself should never distract from its political objective. At some points, it may be advantageous to prolong the war, such as seeking to exhaust the opposition. To achieve this, focus on smaller objectives, even to the point of merely self-defense. You will use less effort, and thus can be sustained for much longer. Those who exercise kindness in battle are often harshly repaid. To achieve your objectives without having to completely destroy your opponent's forces, weaken their resolve by capturing territories and attacking their military. New information, scenarios, setbacks and obstacles are constantly presented to the commander in war. He must ensure his mind is aptly prepared to make quick decisions. Whatever is achieved through warfare is not guaranteed to be absolute. The losing side will often continue to seek victory through politics or other means. Human nature tends to err towards pessimism. We often imagine the might of our opponents to be much larger than it is. Mathematical calculations should not be relied upon too heavily. In war, there are subjective factors to consider, such as human emotion. These must not be overlooked in your deliberations. Make allowance for the unforeseen in your plans and strategies. Even during the bleakest of situations, a commander should intuitively be able to see a way out. They must then have the courage to follow this inner guidance. Your expenditure should be gauged in line with what you were aiming to acquire. When the war starts becoming more costly than its potential rewards, peace should ensue. If your enemy desires war, then this is a request that cannot be denied to them. You will get what you desire through the destruction of your enemy's forces 
all in making clear the inevitability of their downfall should they continue to do battle. All other tactics are a means to this end. A commander should form a connection to the battlefield. They need to understand the large effect even small nuances in the terrain can have. As they become familiar with their environment, they can begin to use it to their advantage. The man of character seldom changes his mind because he has faith in his own judgment. The effective commander is able to see things from a drawn-out perspective. The bigger picture is at the forefront of their mind. Defending forces have the advantage. The presence of a commander should be constantly felt and evoke a feeling of courage within his men. Since it is impractical to deploy all forces at once, warfare becomes a game of estimating how much pressure to apply to each given scenario. A commander should be unshaken by the turbulence of warfare. A stable mind is much more effective than an unstable one. A prince, therefore, being compelled knowingly to adopt the beast, ought to choose the fox and the lion, because the lion cannot defend himself against snares, and the fox cannot defend himself against wolves. Therefore, it is necessary to be a fox to discover the snares and a lion to terrify the wolves. <laughs>